The last time we talked about the ABCs of influence. This time we'll talk about the one, two, threes. The one, two, threes of people. You've probably noticed there are different kinds of people in the world. The fourth way categorizes us in one of three basic groups. Man number one, two, or three. When I say us, I mean people at our level of experience, at our level of consciousness. I'm not saying there are not people above us, four, five, six, and seven, but we don't know very many of those people, if any. The fourth way teaches there are seven possible levels for man. We're at one of the lowest. Doesn't that just figure? It's not very flattering, but the truth about us rarely is. No wonder we don't spend much time seeking the truth about ourselves. We're great when it comes to finding out the truth about someone else, though. It's why we prefer the illusion of pride and vanity. The fourth way system helps us climb the staircase to higher levels of being. That's its aim. That's its purpose. That's what it's for. Man number one has his center of gravity in his body. Man number two has his center of gravity in the emotions. And man number three has his center of gravity in the intellect. Now, center of gravity doesn't mean it's all you've got. It means it's where you settle most often, where you operate from more often than not. Of course, man number one can have feelings and thoughts, but he won't naturally gravitate to them. The same is true for each number of man. Man number two, who basically has his center of gravity in the emotions, can have thoughts and sensations that can be very important to him. Man number three, who has his center of gravity in the intellect, can also have emotions and sensations which may be important to him at different times. But generally, he'll depend more on his thoughts than his emotions or his sensations. Man number one will depend more on his sensations, and man number two will depend more on his emotions. What I've found over the years teaching this is that most folks will easily classify themselves in one or another of the three categories. And what I've also found out is that we're usually wrong, owing to how little we know about ourselves. We generally think we know about ourselves a whole lot better than we actually do, than anyone else does, but we're wrong. Other people do know us better. We just don't like to admit it, and we certainly don't like what it is they know. Those are the things that we've avoided all this time. Consistently avoided, I might add. It's important to note that we're really all three, man number one, two, and three, no matter where our center of gravity is. And the other important thing to note about being man number three, one, two, or three, is that none of these levels of consciousness are awake. In other words, self-aware. The aim of the work is to raise us to the fourth man, man number four, balanced man, a self-conscious man who can balance all three centers consciously. The biggest obstacle is thinking we're already awake and balanced. It's like lost car keys. You don't really know your car keys are lost until you look for them and can't find them. You need the car keys. You go to look where you thought they were, in your pocket, in your purse, hanging on the wall. They're not there. Suddenly you realize you've lost your car keys. But you didn't know it before. You've been all over the house before that, and you could have looked for the car keys, but you thought you had them, so you didn't look for them. It's only when you discovered that you didn't have what you thought you had that you can begin to look. The fourth way is like that. It's only when you discover that you are not who you thought you were, that you can begin to do something to change who you actually are. And so, the work starts with the idea that we don't know ourselves as we think we do. We can't do, and we're not awake. Well, if you don't know yourself, then it stands to reason that you're not awake, at least two parts of yourself. And if you're not awake, it's pretty hard to do. Most of us can't drive a car while we're sleeping in our beds. Now, of course, we can do it in our dreams, and those dreams can be very real. And by the looks of the freeways these days, it looks like there are a lot of people dreaming in their cars. This is a big shock to a lot of people. They don't like being told that they're awake, or that they're not awake, that they're asleep. They don't like being told that they can't do, that they don't know themselves. In fact, a lot of people think this is going downhill. But it's really reaching the place where we can find the stairs. After we've found the stairs, climbing them is the next step. It takes a bit more to climb than it does to find, but finding can be half the battle. We'll pick this up next time. If you'd like to know more about the Fourth Way teachings, go deeper into it. Then let me recommend that you try the Fat Podcast.